Uh, we're heading to Costa Rica. We're back out in the field. We're catching up with OSA Conservation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting the globally significant biodiversity of the OSA Peninsula. This remote corner of Costa Rica harbors two and a half percent of the biodiversity on the entire planet in an area a thousandth of a percent of our planet's total surface area. Absolutely incredible. We have two speakers, I think, who are going to be joining us today. Uh, the first is Carolina. She's an Argentinian wildlife biologist who specializes in community ecology. In 2021, she started working with OSA Conservation as the Wildlife Monitoring Coordinator. She is leading the Arboreal Connectivity Project, which includes the installation of wildlife bridges, camera traps, uh, monitoring, and furthering citizen science projects. And then also we have Eleanor Flat joining us today. She is a wildlife biologist uh, working in the rainforest of Costa Rica. She's a wildlife uh, monitoring program coordinator at OSA Conservation. In 2018, she was named an uh, Elodi Sanford Explorer by the Scientific Exploration Society. Let's bring in, I see Eleanor front and center. Hey, Eleanor, how are you? Hey, Joe, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's been a, a long time. It's good to see you again. <laughs> Why is it that I can never connect with you outside of a tree or maybe <laughs> in the middle of the rainforest? It's just always where you'll find us, up in the canopy. Not a bad way to spend a Saturday. No, I don't think so at all. Eleanor, I'm going to let you take over for a little bit, uh, take you nice and full screen, and then we'll do a little bit of questions. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Joe. Hello, everyone. Good morning. As Joe mentioned, my name is Eleanor Flat, and I'm the Wildlife Conservation and Technology Manager at OSA Conservation. And I've been living and working in the rainforest now for the past six years. So this is the place I call home. And this morning I am up in the canopy. Um, not a bad way to spend a Saturday morning. Um, and I'm actually in the forest in the Osa Peninsula, which is southwest Costa Rica. And we're at the Osa Conservation Campus, which is a biological reserve just on the edge of Corcovado National Park, which is one of the national parks um, in the Osa Peninsula. Um, so you can see this beautiful forest behind me this morning and you can hear all the wonderful sounds of the cicadas and actually we're going to talk to you this morning about one of the threats um, that this forest faces and that's roads. So I'm actually up in a tree um, on the side of a road um, which you can see just down here had to swing across like a monkey. Um, but these roads, um, they cause problems for forests such as uh, disconnectivity. So they break up the forest, which means wildlife populations struggle to move through. Um, and then they also mean that they could possibly cause roadkill. So when animals try and co cross, the cars can hit them and, and that's end game, unfortunately. And that threat is even more of a challenge for the species that live up in the treetops, so where I am now because um, obviously they can't just walk across the road. So if there's no connectivity in the canopy, they're stuck in this forest patch, um, which is not not a good thing. And this is a challenge that is worldwide. So in all the different forest types you get across the globe. But there has been a proven tool to combat this conservation challenge. Um, and that's the Arboreal Bridge. I'm just going to swing around a little bit more. There we go. Um, and I'm joined with Dr. Carolina Pinto this morning. Hello. She's giving us a wave. Um, so that tool is the Arboreal Bridge, which you can see in the background here. So these artificial structures can be installed in the canopy um, above roads. And this gives a pathway for wildlife to move from one forest patch to the other in a safe way. Um, so they don't go head to head um, with any vehicles. And then this means that wildlife can travel across to get to other food resources, um, more habitat that has sleeping sites, particularly for monkeys. Um, and then also that can keep populations interacting. So different individuals of the same species to allow for genetic diversity as well. Um, so these arboreal bridges, more and more countries are using them to overcome the challenge of roads. Particularly, there's been a lot of studies in Australia, um, now South Africa, China, 
Japan, but there are not many studies, just a handful of a few studies in um, tropical forests in Latin America. But if we are to overcome this global challenge for conservation, we need as many bridges of different designs in many different locations for different species. So we can say these designs work best for these species in this area. And then wildlife can safely cross the road wherever they are in the world. So what we've been doing um, at OSA Conservation is we are trialing five different designs of arboreal bridges. So this is one design that we have here, which is like a, a double rope. Uh, let me get a good shot of it. There we go. So it's two pieces of rope from one tree to the other. And this is one of the five designs uh, that we will be trialing. And um, the reason we're trialing different designs is to see which different species use those designs. So for the smaller species like the mouse opossum and the squirrels, are they using these bridges or other designs like the ladder that we have? And then which are the bigger species uh, using? So we have sloths, anteaters and monkeys here that we ideally want to be using these bridges. Um, so how do we find out what wildlife are using these bridges? So we install camera traps um, and Cal Caroline is here now and she's going to check the camera trap and hopefully we found some more species. Well, before checking the camera trap, I want to tell you a little, bit, a little bit about the results that we have found so far. These bridges have been installed for one year now, now and we check them every three months to check what animals are using them. And so far we have found um, seven species, right? Eight species. <laughs> Eight, sorry. So three species of birds that use them for perching. And five mammals, we have uh, white-faced monkeys, king gajus, squirrel, um, uh, uh, woolly opossum, and mouse opossum. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of wildlife that haven't been using these arboreal bridges so far. We're going to check this camera to see if we have any new species. Um, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So we only have one of the four species of monkey uh, that we have in the region using the bridges so far. So it would be really nice if we could get another species today. So the remaining species of monkey that we have here are the squirrel monkey, um, the howler monkey, and the spider monkey. Um, so Carolina is just taking the SD card out of the camera trap now. And we're going to have a little look to see um, if we've got any more activity. So this bridge was last checked um, in December. So this is the first check of 2020. So... Let's hope 2022 brings some good news. We're just having a look now. We are looking. Leave. <laughs> so as you can see, and you see it, more or less. More or less. Well, sometimes we don't have any species. It's just nothing because it, it, the camera activates with movement. So if the bridge move because of wine or anything we will have like videos with nothing so this one let's take the, the following one okay whilst carolina has a look at those videos i just want to talk a little bit more about one species in particular that we're really looking forward to seeing using these bridges um and that's the spider monkey uh, that's the largest species of primate we have here in the Ossa, um, and it's an endangered species. Um, but their ability to, to disperse a, a wide variety of seeds means it's not only important for that animal to cross the bridge, but also for the forests on the other side, because um, they're rainforest architects. So they can divert, disperse a wide variety of seeds. Um, so that's always one species that we're looking for. Do we have something? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, can you see? This is one of the primates we were missing. This is a so we've got a squirrel monkey. monkey. It's an endemic species of this region. And also it's dangerous. Super cool that they are using it. I don't know if you guys can see the video. But the little monkey's walking on one part of the branch. Mm -hmm. um, and then it... It's using its tail kind of as like a pendulum for balance. 
Eleanor, so can you try to, to play the video again, maybe a little closer yeah. and a little less of an angle because we got a little glare of the sun. Like a little less of an angle. How about that? that uh, tilt it down, maybe just a little bit down. Yeah, okay, I see the muscle now. Yeah, with the tail. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, amazing. So it seems that animals are getting used to it and they're starting to use the breeze, so it's, it's complete success for now. <laughs> we know in some countries it takes like five years to animals to get used to it. So this is like super yeah, good. So we've got nine species in around a year using these bridges. So that's really good early stage success. But like Carolina said, it can take almost five years sometimes for wildlife to start using these bridges. So that's something else that we're testing here at Osso Conservation. How can we get wildlife using these bridges sooner? So now we are clearly trying um, a vanilla experiment, we call it. But it's just um, vanilla essence that is going to hopefully attract wildlife because as there are artificial structures many animals don't think that it's a good way to go to the other side of the road so what we want is animals to get attracted to it so we are going to attach this photo that has tiny towels inside it smells delicious it smells delicious as vanilla and we're going to attach this in one side of the bridge and another one like this one on the other side and we're going to check a more or less every two months to put again the vanilla essence and see if animals are being attracted or not. So hopefully with this uh, attractants, more animals are going to try to use the bridge and hopefully learn how to use it soon. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Um, Joe, I don't know if we have any questions. All right. Excellent. Well, that's great. It's, I mean, first of all, it's awesome to see the two of you up in the tree with some really cool <laughs> conservation. Uh, and you know, you're always thinking of solutions like that vanilla essence to put it uh, on either side to see if that can get the animals using those bridges a little quicker. Mm -hmm. So speaking of those bridges, you mentioned there was one monkey species that's been using them. What do you think might be keeping the other ones from doing it? Do you think it's just they haven't discovered it yet? Or do you think there's something that might make them nervous about the bridge structure. What do you think has kept the other species away so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question, Joe. So we now have two species of monkey, including the one that we just found. And they're actually the two smaller species of the four. So that could be um, part of it, that the smaller species, the bridges can obviously support a smaller weight better. Um, so maybe these larger species take a little bit longer to get used to them or we need to adapt our design. So we're always working on new designs or new support systems that we can add to the existing designs so more species use them. Um, but recently, about a couple of weeks ago, um, the spider monkey, which is the biggest species, uh, we found one individual playing with the bridges. They didn't cross, but they were just kind of bouncing around on them, seeing what's this. So maybe with time, now they know that they're there and they're touching them they might attempt to cross. And also, Joe, that's a question that we want to, uh, to find a solution, to find it, like, what is the answer? So we're going to try different models too, to see if there is something about the model. I don't like this design. We're going to try like maybe three ropes to have it more like security uh, or a leather bridge, but with a mesh. So we're going to try different structures to see if they need like a more confident structure or, or what is the best, the best design for these two species. All right, very cool. Well, I know that that vanilla would work for me. I love the smell of vanilla. So that 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 would work for me. I'd check that out for sure. Uh, <laughs> Lena got it out her bag. I was hit in the face with vanilla. It was lovely. Yeah, very cool. Well, there's a question here coming in via the chat. And they're wondering, have you ever tried something to make them appear more natural, maybe more to look more like a branch? Is that mm -hmm. something that you've, you've tried before? Yeah, there has been some studies that have used kind of natural materials for bridges. Um, something that we're perhaps going to start doing is attaching kind of natural vines, at least to where the bridge is connected to the tree. Um, and then with time, it will just decompose and fall off. But at least to begin with, it will make the transition a little bit smoother and not be like, here's an artificial rope. 
Yeah, the Be only, careful. Mm-hmm, the only problem with natural structures is because of the weather here. It's like, like it makes everything goes bad really fast. So if we put a natural, let's say, rope, it mm-hmm. would take three months to like fall apart. Yeah. So um, that's definitely. why yeah, we have to overcome that issue. Uh-huh. And we definitely need structures that are going to last years and years because as our results have shown, it takes time for different species to start using them. Well, that's a perfect, uh, what you just said there, Eleanor, is perfect because someone is asking right now, what do you think some factors are that could take, make it take like three or four or five years before uh, an animal uses the rope for the first time? What are some factors you think that, that might delay their, their use of it? Yeah, that's a great question. I think one factor could be how long the road has been there. So whether um, if it's a new road, perhaps these individuals already know like where suitable crossing pathways are. So if you put a bridge there, they'll start to use them straight away. But if the road has been there for a long time, like some of these roads have been here since the 70s, 80s, that could be a factor. Um, And then also the size of the road, because obviously the longer the bridge, the more bouncy it becomes which obviously isn't fun um, if you're a larger species of animal. Um, And then any more possible factors? I think them just getting used to an artificial structure, Mm -hmm. I think is one of the main things. But then when you start to have a lot of bridges in a region and these species and individuals learn what they are and how to use them, because we've definitely had videos of kinkajou where the first time this kinkajou used the bridge, He was all over the place, wobbling around, didn't really know what to do. And then he figured out he could put his tail on the second part of the bridge as a support. And then he just ran across. And then every night after that, he knew how to cross and where to cross. Um, So that's something else that we need to think about as well. Yes, I think probably the artificial structure is not like animals are used to their own paths, their natural paths. But maybe an artificial one would take longer than to like feel confident to use it. So it's, it's not that weird. Okay. Another question here about the recordings. How do those recordings uh, that you're collecting, how do they help uh, in your work? Mm-hmm. So yeah, with those camera trap videos, we're able to see which species are using the bridges. And we actually have a camera trap on both sides. So we can actually see which species are making a complete crossing. Um, But then also other species that are kind of investigating um, the bridge as well. Because obviously we want to see over time which species use these bridges and and how they move across them as well. Because that's all valuable behaviour information that we can apply and adapt what we're doing to get better results for conservation. Yes, for example, we have seen like the double rope, like the animals use one rope to cross and maybe the other rope to attach the tail. So maybe it's a question like some animals need two ropes to cross. When we need to decide which which design we are going to install next, we're going to think probably a double rope and not a single rope. So it's super useful mm-hmm. to see how animals cross, how they use the structure, how confident they feel in any of, like in the different designs. So yes, the videos are like key. All right. Well, I'm super excited that uh, you were live with us today when you saw the squirrel monkey. So a new species using the bridge. I think that is so awesome. So I'm so glad we got to see that today. Yes, I was looking to the nothing videos like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we panicked about what was going to happen, is it? <laughs> yeah. You, 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 you kept us in suspense. With, you know, there were a few no-goes, but then we got magic. We got gold. So that was pretty sweet. Yeah. So I, I'd love to know, and I think those tuning in, what brought each of you to conservation? I'd love to, to hear what brought each of you into conservation. Awesome. I'll let Carolina start that off. Okay. Well, I studied in Argentina for like almost 11 years to become a PhD specialist in community ecology. But then I decided that I wanted to apply all my knowledge to a conservation project. I had a lot of experience during my career in volunteering programs uh, in conservation NGOs in Latin America. So I knew that I wanted to do that in my future. So when I 
finished my PhD, as soon as I finished, I started looking for a job that was like my dream job. And then I found this position and applied to it. And I couldn't believe that I got it. And I'm here like from one year now. So yeah, that's and my then, story. <laughs> and then I guess for me, I've always known from being a child that I wanted to work with animals. And then it was when I was um, in university where I learned more and more about conservation and realized I didn't want to just do research or or be a vet, I wanted to actually have impact and try and save some of Earth's last wild places. So when I graduated, um, I came to Costa Rica for a two month internship. Um, and that was six years ago. <laughs> um, so you could say I kind of found found the perfect place to, to contribute to conservation. All right. It's funny how those those short intended visits to Costa Rica turn into much longer, much longer stays. It, it's just <laughs> truly yeah. like a beautiful and an amazing place. And I mean, the biodiversity, uh, hard to match that. Yeah, it's a pretty intense. And I think just on a hike in the morning, you can see kind of five different animals and you're surrounded by these giant um, ancient mega trees. It, it's hard to leave when you see things like that every day. Yeah. So I've got another question here. We're obviously these connections through the trees are great for our boreal animals, uh, like the monkeys uh, and other species. Is there anything being looked at for species that are more on the ground? You know, here mm -hmm. in Canada, we sometimes have overpasses or even underpasses where animals can go you know, right under the road and bypass the road uh, entirely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And so what we've been doing last year um, is assessing wildlife activity, um, particularly around the paved highways that we have across the neck of the Ossa Peninsula and then kind of split in the Ossa Peninsula in two. So what we did was install camera traps kind of along the road at different distances from the road. And using that data, we're going to highlight um, the best spot for a wildlife overpass or underpass for these ter terrestrial species. So that's something that we're working towards for sure. Mm -hmm. And it takes longer. So these structures are very easy to install. We install them in one day. But those those structures are going to take longer and legal steps need to be taken. So it's, it's a longer process, but we're working on that too. Yeah, and it's important to get it right, right? And it sounds like you're in the phase right now where you're figuring out what is going to be the most beneficial spot because uh, the last thing you want to do is put it somewhere where it's it's just not being used or, or accessed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we're looking at wildlife activity and, and forest connectivity in the area to get the best spot and then kind of build from there with all the other elements that would need to consider as well. Yeah, and then these, these bridges uh, that you've been using, how many of them uh do you have currently right now so we have 13 right now um but by the end of the year we'll have around 22. okay very cool so, that's a so big number more and more always yeah all right well i think one fun question here that we can kind of uh end up on oh actually let's squeeze in another one here so lily is wondering uh, where would you suggest somebody looks if they're looking for an exciting job in, in, in conservation? Uh, is there somewhere you would point them to look for, for interesting jobs in conservation, particularly in the field? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Cause it's always difficult to get uh, lots of good field experience when you're starting out in conservation. I think we both, mm -hmm. we both found that. First place to look would be the Ossa Conservation website. <laughs> <laughs> open, so come and come and join us um and then <laughs> and then also i mean i always follow ecolog and uh conservation job boards do you have any other places that you look i look in one that is called bio biologia it's for more like latin american like uh audience but it can be an option too and it's an it's a blog that shows like how to become a conservationist because when you start it's very difficult and it gives you a lot of tips and it gives you a lot of 
opportunities that are very cool. So it, for me, it was, the, where, it was the blog where I found this position. Can you repeat the name of that one more time? It was really quiet for us when you said the name. Biobiology. Well, I can send it somewhere if it's possible. Because yeah, I'm you, from in Spanish, I think. So. Yeah, <laughs> if, you, if you email it to me, if you have some time, uh, I can add it to the description of the video. Okay. Wonderful. Thank Thanks, Jay. Very cool. Well, I did share the website. I'll put it back up out there on the screen again. If you want to dig a little bit deeper, if you want to learn about the work, opportunities, of course, uh, to help support the work. And I'll put up these here as well. So to Osa Conservation Twitter uh, and on Instagram as well, because that's pretty important. And then, of course, we want people to follow both of you as well. So Carolina, I found your Instagram. So I'll put that up there. Uh, if anybody would like to follow along uh, those adventures. And then, uh, Eleanor, I found your Twitter and Instagram, so I'll pop those uh, up there for people who might want uh, to follow along and explore. Yeah, you'll have lots of our Boreal Bridge updates on all of those social media platforms. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, we have had two great uh, virtual trips to the, the Osa Peninsula this morning. Uh, I'm Wonderful. so excited that we were able to see that uh, live spotting uh, of the squirrel monkey using the bridge. That's really exciting to see another species uh, that's using the bridge. I imagine that's going to be part of your day going forward now is going through more of those videos to see what you've got. Yeah, more trees to climb and more videos to watch. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for climbing up that tree for us today, uh, taking a little time to share your passion for conservation uh, and to share the amazing work that OSA Conservation is doing. We love our live events to Osa Conservation. Awesome. Thank you, Joan. It's been great hanging out with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. And we can't wait for our next student event. Perfect. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.